What's happening, y'all? This is Andrew from Mirror Music 99, and today I'm going to do an audience request. Um, somebody asked me in the comments to do a Terrapin Station. So this is not a song that I'm familiar with, though I am familiar with the name of the album, obviously. I feel like I've heard that before. But um, for those of you who are new here, I'm a novice deadhead. I am learning about them. This is my, your, What you're watching is my journey through the, the learning process, right? You're, so you should not come here expecting that I say all smart things all the time and say things that um, show that I know a lot about the Grateful Dead because I know a little bit now because you all have taught me, but I don't know a whole lot. Anyway, so I'm going to do something, do this a little bit differently though. Um, I'm going to start with a Terrapin Station from... Hold on, let's look at the date. It's um, March 18th, 1977, which is, I think, shortly after, or maybe even before the album was released. I think it was released around then-ish, um, though I didn't look that up, so correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, but it's one of the early versions of, of this song, right? Um, and then I'm going to do another one in the same video alongside it um, from um, December of 1989. So um, 12 years apart, and or almost 13 years apart, and... I know the lineups are a little bit different in the band at that point. Um, one of them is 11 minutes and one of them is 22. So I expect to hear it having evolved over that amount of years. So anyway, the first one is, again, from March 18th, 1977. I think it's a Winterland one. Let's see. Yeah, it's a Winterland. Um, so... Here we go. This is the first one. Let's see what we got. Very lyrically intensive. I like it. While the story teller speaks of all within the fire breaks, suddenly he flies open and a girl is standing. Again, I don't have the lyrics pulled up now. I probably should for a song like this, but you guys are going to have to tell me what this is about, too.
Is that the piano playing? Yeah, okay, that is the piano playing counterpoint. And the bass, too. This is a great example of what you all were teaching me at the very beginning about all of the instruments playing kind of their own melody lines and somehow them fusing all together in a the way that actually works. I guess this is what he's trying to do in the song, right? I would guess. This is slower than I usually hear Garcia playing. This is... Yeah. It's almost like he's figuring it out as he goes testing things out. I'm also used to hearing a more full sound. Like, I hear one guitar and one piano and one bass and one drum. I'm used to hearing more than that. It's good, it's cool, I like it. It's almost like they were trying to decide whether they wanted to end it there or keep going. Sounds like a Beatles song for real, for real, right there. Like a day in the life, kind of. Even in the fact that it has almost like two movements to it. So they weren't trying to decide if they want to keep keep playing it. They were trying to decide like how to move from one part to the other, or when I guess from one part to the other. song. I like it a whole lot. I don't know how to explain this. It feels like springtime to me, almost. Like, things gradually opening and blooming, somehow. This is 
not expected at all. It's nice. I bet this is one of the, if not the place where the big freak out jam happens in the 22 minute version too. That'd be an octave pedal he's using, right? Nice arpeggio, too. There's that cascading riff again. Yep. man i dig that so again that was from march of 1977 so one of maybe not the earliest version but certainly one of the earliest versions of that song um so i guess one of the purposes of this video is to hear and, and one of the things i'm interested in other than the um, how songs transition from one to the other um, the interpolations that they do. I'm also really interested in like how the songs themselves evolve from year to year and show to show. Um, you've said repeatedly in the comments that you, one of the joys of a Grateful Dead show is that you never exactly know what you're going to get. Um, even if they played the same set list, which they wouldn't, but even if they played the same set list, they would play them totally differently. So it's always something magical and new. Um, so it'll be interesting to hear how the song has evolved from 1977 to 1989 as well. Um, and I hope you enjoy it too. I hope you enjoy this like journey that both that I'm going on and that the song is going on. Um, I get Terrapin Station. I mean, I don't know. I have not looked at the lyrics. I'm actually going to pull them up in just a second um, while I am... pull them up um, while we're listening so I can kind of follow along a little bit better. I mean, I've said repeatedly on videos before too that when I listen to things for the first time, I almost always zone out on the lyrics and just listen to like the musical parts of it. Um, that's just how my brain works. So, which is weird because I'm an English teacher and um, I spend my life talking about words and how words are put together. But that's a story from a different, for a different time. Um, but anyway, Terrapin Station, like the idea um, of a station is a, a stopping point on a journey, right? And so one of the things that I've noticed about the Grateful Dead's music is that it has a sense of movement that a lot of other bands don't have. The Even bands with longer songs, they have movements to them, like part one, part two, part three, part four. They're like um, parts of a concerto or something like that, right? But... For the dead, it feels like we're being taken with them on a journey somehow. Um, and 
and I don't know how that happens exactly. Um, I just know that that's what I experience as I'm listening to. So the second version of Terrapin Station is um, from Oakland Alameda, um, which is, I think, the Oakland A's stadium in 1989, um, which that's um, is this the earthquake one? it's not an earthquake one but like the earthquake happened in oakland in like like september of 89 i'm pretty sure right am i am i hallucinating that um so this would have would have happened pretty soon after that um so we're gonna see how this song terrapin station has evolved from from 77 to to 89 so here we go this is version two. I always love hearing little cheers like that when people figure out what song they're getting into. synthesizer in this one. That's placed on like a horn setting too. Almost. Oh yeah, this has a very different feel. I'm looking at the lyrics for Terrapin Station and those words are not on there. <laughs> so did the lyrics evolve too? Okay, I pulled it up on a different site and there they are. Okay. Oh, it's a ballad. It's a love song. It's a sea shit. <laughs> it is. It doesn't sound like that, but that's the lyric it is, right? While the story teller speaks, a dog in the fire creeps. Suddenly it flies open, and a girl is standing there. Eyes alight with glowing hair. All that fancy paints is fair. What a lyric, man. In the lion's den. Which of you to gain me tell? Risk uncertain pain of hell. I will not forgive you if you will not take me the chance.
coming out again So really left at me That's how it stands today You decide if you was wild Tell me, make no choice Soon he will not hear his voice His job is to shed light not to master. I love that lyric so much. Is this one of the places where they're going to wander off a while? This is sort of a place where you transition between, that's what the lyrics say, um, transition between part one and part two of this. I'm glad I heard that correctly. Like... I think that keyboard sound synthesizer sounds really weird in the Grateful Dead music. Like, I mean, I don't begrudge them doing it, but... It was a very different vibe, though. That part sounds almost like video game music. Or movie soundtrack or something, right? Like the outro. Calling to the muse, though, right? You're hearing the storyteller speak directly to us, slash the muse. It goes all the way back to the Greeks, right? in the other one? Okay, that part was, yeah. This is the part that was at the very end of the last one, though, wasn't it?
sounds like guitar. Is that Brent? Is it, I mean, I, I know it's him playing, but like, is him? Is he playing like a piano with one hand and a synthesizer with the other, or are there two keys players? Two of them, right? That'd be two people playing keys. Actually, a saxophone there they have going on in there, or it's a keyboard that's playing the sound. That sounds like an actual saxophone. Wait, is that, that's a guitar being played through, like, not a talk box, but it's what it sounds like. Some kind of filter. Effects pedal. reminds me of is um, there's a Decemberist album which comes obviously way way after this so they may be pulling from cribbing from this but it feels very much like this this kind of feel Yeah, from the Hazards of Love, the one that's kind of like a rock opera, sounds, has this feel. Obviously that was like 2009, so it's way after this. Uh, so, they are also pulling, the symbols are pulling from this style.
take that. Again, really basic roof. I'm doing lots of interesting stuff with it. Is that the motif for the last part? Right. It's definitely changed up a little bit. really is a saxophone player who's playing it. Do you guys know? Or is it just a keyboard thing that I'm just, my ears aren't good enough to catch? jazz thing where they're giving the, that player a chance to shine a little bit giving a very very loose structure <laughs> Thank you. 
sounds like they're almost in a completely different space now. Like, what I'm hearing has not a ton to do with the original motif, right? There's also like a part three on this lyric that it does not sound like they're going to get to in this particular show. Okay, maybe. Yeah, that's that was that was a trip for real, man. Like, if I'm being a hundred percent honest, like I prefer the earlier version better than at least this one. I don't know if all of the like '80s versions of the song sounded um, like this. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the synthesizer versions of it, where it was plays such a prominent role there. Um, I dig the saxophone, but like I do personally like the original one or the first one better um the end of that the last five or seven minutes or so of it just sound like somebody got some new effects pedals and they're dicking around with them like i mean and it may be true i don't know like and when i say it like that i know people are going to hear that as an insult i don't mean it as an insult necessarily i mean it's it's an experimental thing right i mean they're trying to figure out where the song goes and where where it ends up um it's just I'm used to the the things that I've heard from the dead so far have gone off on these journeys, but they've also always come back around. And he and Jerry does pull back the guitar riff a little bit at the very end of that, but um, it doesn't did not feel like it had the same sense of movement. And that last third, really, that I'm I'm used to hearing. Uh, anyway, so I mean, it does make sense though that a song that's about a station would have several movements to it. Um, and, I, and I do like that about the song. Um, okay, so that's that's all really I have. I'm glad you hung out with me. I know this is a really long one. Um, my recording says we're at like 40 minutes now. Um, so if you've hung out this whole time, thanks. Um, it's been pretty awesome. This is the time where I remind you that um, because of youtube's um copyright things that i don't get paid for doing any of this unless you send me super thanks super chats so um if you feel moved or inspired um you can do that don't feel compelled to um but yeah thanks for hanging out um it's, it's been quite a ride i'll see y'all next time take care